As I contemplated the marvelous coincidence that you are beginning your officiate on the solemnity of Pentecost, my mind and soul got a little lost in the idea of new beginnings, new beginnings in the church, in the Pentecost event, for God's plan for his people bursting out in a new way, new beginnings for us, for you, for the world. As God created us, so has God recreated us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The Father and the Son pour out the spirit of love and life, which is the bond between them. He pours, they pour it out upon us without measure. As we heard earlier today in the readings at Mass, that pouring, outpouring of the Holy Spirit burned away the fear of the apostles all those gathered in prayer and sent them forth in mission. That same spirit, the advocate, the paraclete, the consoler, brought down God's very life afresh and anew on his people. And the Holy Spirit continues what Jesus bequeathed to the church in the sacraments. That Holy Spirit gift that reconciles and feeds, brings to rebirth confirms, marries, and heals his people in the sacraments. The beginning of the novitiate is the beginning of a new life for each of you in a certain sense. It is the inauguration of a year of prayer and discernment and work as you try and live the new identity of being a Carmelite, a man called to be with and for God, with and for the community, with and for the mission of the church. May the Holy Spirit burn away the old man within you and bring on the new so that the baptismal grace that is yours may blossom and grow abundantly. And another thing that came to mind was this word of advice. Make the Holy Spirit your silent partner of your whole religious life and begin that today. I decided to look up what is a silent partner in the business dictionary and I found this definition. A silent partner is an investor who does not have management responsibilities but provides capital and shares liability for any losses experienced by the entity. Now truly, the Holy Spirit is always our real, silent partner. St. Paul tells us that we would not be even able to say that Jesus is Lord if the Spirit was not within us, and that the Holy Spirit prays within us with groaning too deep for words we can't even understand and grasp that action and movement of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, we might say, invests in us. We can say that the Holy Spirit believes in us, sees us as worth his investment, because an investor only gives his or her money or time or gifts to someone or something that is worthy of receiving the investment. The Holy Spirit is God. Therefore, the Holy Spirit is life and love and truth, and that is what he invests in us, in you. For every good and precious and world worthwhile thing comes from God above. Mercy without end, hope and promise. The Holy Spirit is often silent, but never inactive, and must be paid special attention. Let the Holy Spirit's investment in you come to perfection by using the capital, the gifts he has given you fully and wisely. <coughs> the definition also tells us that the silent partner doesn't have any management responsibilities. The silent partner who is the Holy Spirit respects our freedom, never forcing us. The Holy Spirit doesn't micromanage us. Because the Holy Spirit wants us to grow in our God-given freedom, grow in our own self-direction, aid us in our transformation, help us to grow, again, as St. Paul says, to our full maturity in Christ. 
While the Holy Spirit doesn't manage, he does call and inspire and spiritually direct us through the Word of God, through our rule and constitutions, through our superiors, through the community and through the calls of the people of God who are in need. We have to learn to listen to that Holy Spirit's call and direction and respond out of our freedom, not because we have to, but because we want to. And we want to to the point that we must. As the great spiritual masters of Carl tell us, the one who resists and cannot humble him or herself and obey the one placed in front of them that they can see, will resist and deflect out of pride the heavenly one whom they cannot see. The Holy Spirit, more intimate to us than we are to ourselves without fail, will uh, nudge and inspire and invite us to always go in the right direction, maybe even sometimes letting us fall on our faces, but never force us. Like good sons of the prophet Elijah, who found God in the gentle, silent breeze, like Saint Joseph, who could recognize God's will even in his dreams, and like Mary, who said, Yes, even in the depths of mystery, you, my newest brothers in Carmel, have to learn to listen to your silent and loving partner, who wants to direct you, not force you, in the light of day, and in the darkest of nights, to become the work of art that God wills you to be. And finally, in the definition we heard that the silent partner shares responsibility for any losses you may experience. I take this as a simple reminder that God loves you, God loves all of us, and wills us to life and love every day. God shares responsibility. God is with us in every joy, and God is there to help us with every cross. God never abandons or forsakes us, the psalmist tells us. God is never arbitrary. He is intimately bound up in your formation. As the ratio of formation states, God is an agent of formation, and God works through his Holy Spirit and through yourself and through your formator and through the community. Befriend that spirit, that agent of formation, that silent partner in your prayer. Befriend him in your reading, in your study, in your dreaming. Befriend him. And remember, too, that God is just as involved in your sharing of the projects of community building and human relationships. And God is involved in your cleaning and washing and cooking and shopping and painting and all the other things that keep us connected to life. When the novitiate gets tough, think about all those people driving in heavy traffic back and forth to work every day to feed their families. When the novitiate gets tough, think about the people who have lost their homes and loved ones in tornadoes and fires and floods. When it gets tough, think of the people fleeing their countries and homes because of terrorism, war, and oppression. Think of the people who have lost their jobs, their dignity, their own health. Pray for them and recognize that you are not in an initiate to escape the realities of life, but you are in an initiate to learn how to embrace the realities of life within yourself and among your brothers with God, so that with the help of the Holy Spirit, your silent and loving partner, and ultimately in the praise of and doing of God's will, you will be of help to others as Carmelite religious. May God bless you and Mary keep you.